This is the Philippine freshwater crocodile. There are less than 200 of these in the wild. You're a little dude, so I'm not as worried about you, but even you are an animal I would not want to receive a bite from. Did you know that? Hmm? No spazzing out, please. No whipping me in the face with that tail or those teeth. Dude, you are beautiful. You are so beautiful. So alert, too. I see you taking everything in. Look at those eyes moving. Seeing your whole environment, huh? It's good. And this is a part of my physical exam, you know. I want to see that you're looking around when I move you. That tells me that you're bright and alert. That's a good thing. Can you open up for me? I like what I see. Look at you, even a little guy like you, you got teeth that are like a quarter inch long. You can try to pull that tongue back. If I'm lucky, I'll get just, there we go. So his airway is just behind that tongue and that's how they block their mouth. You can see how effective it is. It really creates a nice seal. I'm gonna let go of the tongue here and you can see, look at how well that seals that mouth. There's no water going in there whatsoever. I love closing your mouth. Look at this, this tooth right here, the big tooth right over my finger, that protrudes on the upper jaw of a crocodile, unlike an alligator. You're being a very good crocodile. Thank you. When I'm in any country, I always try to find a way to work with my favorite animals, and that is a crocodile. I've worked with many different crocodile species around the world. And I'm here at Itzankanak, and that is Mayan for the house of the crocodiles. Okay, so this one is a crocodile that doesn't have seeds. Right. The first crocodile they'd like me to look at sustained a severe injury after being hit by a car, and its mandible, or its lower jaw, was basically destroyed. Poor guy. As you can see, it even affected his tongue, and it's, it's challenging for him to swallow and everything. Was he rescued? Did somebody bring it here? They found it in the road. They just the found road. it on the road, wow. They found it in the road and they bring it here. So you guys just found this crocodile, like hit by a car and said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna save you, we're gonna bring you in, we're gonna yes. give you a life here. Yeah. He can't catch food on his own, he's missing like his whole, it's like us missing this. I go, and they teach him how to eat. They have to help him to eat. How big was he when you guys got him? When they found him, he was a little more smaller and more skinnier, mm -hmm. very skinny and this, they hydrated. There's no way that crocodile would survive in the wild. He was gonna suffer for a very long time. Crocodiles, they take a long time to die and they have such a slow metabolism so he would have been starving for several months, maybe even years, before he finally passed. What do you think about making a uh, prototype for his? I mean, I think as long as you're able to hand feed him and give him the care he needs, I don't think a prosthetic is necessary because he's here. Now, if this was an animal we're trying to release back in the wild, obviously we would want to discuss that. And even in that case, I'd be nervous in case it doesn't work. Crocodiles have such a strong bite that even with a prosthetic jaw implant, if he's biting down on something, it might refracture. From the medical perspective, I think the best thing is that you keep hand feeding him, keep him protected from other males that he would potentially fight with, and when appropriate, allow him to breed. It's really sad to see a crocodile without a functioning jaw because obviously that's their livelihood, that's how they eat. But you know, this guy, he's actually doing okay because he's somewhere where he's protected and he's getting the food and care that he needs. So even if he's missing a lot of his mandible and not able to bite or chew or anything like that, as long as he gets the food he needs, he's gonna be fine. They can put him with another females so he can reproduce with them. And so now he's gone from potentially suffering a slow, miserable death to being rescued here. And now you have him breeding and he's helping make babies to contribute to the more like population. I think that's a really special story. Cool, so there's another crocodile you want me to look at, is that right? Yeah. Uh, so this is the other crocodile that was rescued. Oof. How long has its back looked like that? Uh, they rescued him a year ago. He was very injured. What, we're see what I'm seeing here on his back is, is mostly scar tissue. Does his back wound look improved or better compared to when you got him? So he's healing. I mean, this is one of those examples 
that shows you the remarkable healing capacity of crocodiles. The handsome boy. Do we have chicken? It's okay to give him a chicken, a little bit? He doesn't like you. He doesn't? No. I'm trying to give him food. Maybe she doesn't like veterinarians. Is that what she said? <laughs> oh, come on. I love crocodiles, though. <laughs> Nobody likes me. <laughs> there it is. There he is. Crocodiles can sustain some of the most advanced injuries of, of any animal in nature, and they can heal and recover for, from it. And this is an example of that. Really, the best thing for him is to continue to let him heal. We don't need to stress him out today because everything's healing and going in the right direction. The staff here at the Crocodile House found this crocodile on the road and thought, you know what, we're going to give this guy a second chance, and they brought it here, and they've been caring for it ever since. So I think you guys gave him, you know, the care he needed. Keep him, you know, isolated from other crocodiles that can't re-injure that wound, but it's healing really nicely.